This video is sponsored by LogRocket, the front-end performance monitoring application that gives you the power to see why bugs are happening and experience them just like your users. Try it today at logrocket.com forward slash YT and check out LogRocket at the link in the top right of the video to get 14 days for free. Hey developers, how's it going? In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to make HTTP requests like a pro with Axios. Now, some of you are no doubt thinking, but what about the fetch API? Can I just use that? You totally can. But one of the big benefits with Axios is that it has a very robust feature set. We're going to be looking at quite a few of those features today in this video. So as with fetch, Axios is promise based, but it does have a more powerful and flexible feature set, has quite a few benefits over the native fetch API, like request and response interception, pardon the crazy animations here, streamline error handling, protection against cross-site request forgery, support for upload progress, response timeout, the ability to cancel requests, support for older browsers, that's an important one especially, and automatic JSON data transformation. Installing Axios is a breeze no matter what you're using. You can install it multiple ways with NPM, simple commands here, just NPM install Axios, same with Bower, same with Yarn, and then for those developers who prefer a CDN, you can certainly go that route too. What are we going to be doing in this video? I'm going to show you how to make some requests with Axios. I'm going to show you some shorthand methods. I'll show you how to handle the response, how to make simultaneous requests with Axios. We're going to send some custom headers. We're going to transform requests and responses. We'll intercept those said requests and responses. I'll also show you how to implement protection against cross-site request forgery. Canceling requests is also on the docket. And then finally, we'll take a look at some very valuable third-party libraries. There are so many, and they're all on GitHub. Let's get out of this death by PowerPoint. We're going to go to my code editor and I will show you a lot of these features. We'll start with something simple. We're just going to make a request with Axios. This is going to look familiar for those who have worked with jQuery's Ajax function. It's simply telling Axios to send a post request to forward slash login. We're using an object of key value pairs here as its data. Axios will automatically convert this data to JSON and then send it as the request body. Let's go ahead and take a look at some shorthand methods. This is another great feature of Axios. You can perform different types of requests simply using the shorthand methods. As you can see, we have request, get, delete, head, options, post, put, and patch. And if we wanted to upgrade this example, you could kind of think of this as an upgrade from our original example using one of these shorthand methods. Now let's take a look at how to handle the response. Once an HTTP request is made, Axios is going to return a promise that's either fulfilled or rejected. It all depends on the response on the backend service. And so to handle something like this, we can use the then method just like this. And if the promise is fulfilled, the first argument of then will be called. If the promise is rejected, however, the second argument is going to be called. Now, if we take a look at the Axios documentation, the fulfillment value is actually an object containing this information right here. So data, that's the response that was provided by the server. Status is the HTTP status code, status text. We also have headers. Config is the configuration that was provided to Axios for the request. A request, that's the request that generated this response. It's the last client request instance in Node and an XML HTTP request instance in the browser. Now let's take a look at simultaneous requests. One of Axios's more interesting features is its ability to make multiple requests in parallel. And how it does this is that it passes an array of arguments to the all method. And what this method is going to do is return a single promise object that resolves only when all the arguments you pass as an array have resolved. So here's an example of that. And what this does, I'm just going to paste my GitHub URLs here. This code makes two requests to the GitHub API, and then it's logging the value of the created app property of each response response to the console. So remember, keep in mind, if any of the arguments reject, then the promise is going to immediately reject with the reason of the first promise that rejects. You can also create custom headers with Axios. This is a really easy thing to do. It's just three, four lines of code. You just pass an object containing the headers as the last argument. So if we define const as options and then threw in our headers info, the final line is going to be axios.post. And then the last argument here is going to be options, which as you can see was defined up here. That's all you have to do. Put it in the last argument and you're good to go. Let's say you want to transform requests and responses. So by default, 
Axios automatically converts requests and responses to JSON, but it also allows you to override the default behavior and then you can define a different transformation mechanism. This is useful if you're working with an API that accepts only a specific data format like XML or CSV. And to change the request data before sending it to your server, we're going to set the transform request property in the config object. But keep in mind that this method is only going to work for put, post, and patch request methods. This is just another really handy thing, a great feature of Axios. Hey there, it's me again. Just wanted to take a second to say that this video is brought to you by LogRocket, a front-end performance monitoring solution. If you like this video and would like us to keep doing ones like it, all you have to do is click on any of the links in the top right of this video to sign up for a free trial. That's it. We hope you enjoy the video. In the last example, we transformed requests and responses. And in this example, we're going to intercept requests and responses. With this feature, you can actually examine and change HTTP requests from your program to the server and vice versa. This is useful for a bunch of things, logging, authentication. And at first glance, interceptors look a lot like transforms, but they differ in one big way. Um, they only receive the data and headers as arguments, whereas interceptors receive the entire response object or request configuration. And what this code does essentially is logging a message to the console whenever a request is sent, then it waits until it gets a response from the server. And at that point, it's gonna print the time the account was created at GitHub to the console. And one advantage of using interceptors is that you don't have to implement tasks for each HTTP request separately. Okay, this next one is for my security-minded developers. This is cross-site request forgery protection. You never want to get caught up in that. It's messy. It's destructive. It's not good. And there, there are a lot of ways to execute a cross-site request forgery if you're a bad guy. Uh, we won't get into those, but just know there is protection against cross-site request forgeries in Axios. And Axios lets you embed additional authentication data when making requests. And we're going to throw in XSRF cookie name along with the header name. And then down here, we simply send the request. The code for this is so simple, but it is so helpful and can really help protect you with these cross-site request forgeries. Now let's check out canceling requests. Fun fact, this was added in Axios 1.5, so it hasn't been around forever, but it is a really great feature that they added. So in the first line here, we're just defining source. And then we go down here to create our get request. We have the cancel token, which is source.token. And then we have a catch block an if else statement right here. We'd handle our error right here. And then really just one line to cancel the request. The message parameter right here is, is optional. I like being verbose. There's a lot going on. I like to be explicit with this kind of thing. So I did throw in an error message. So you just put in here source.cancel and then throw in your message parameter. Finally, let's take a look at some third party libraries. As you can see here, there are quite a few, but these are really just putting the cherry on the Sunday as far as functionality goes. Whether you're a React developer, you're testing with Mocha, uh, lots of different use cases here. Axios extensions, this includes throttle and cache get request features, Axios API versioning, cache plugin, cookie jar support, hooks for React hooks, so many. The nice part about this list is that these libraries are all on GitHub, so you can just click and go and be on your merry way. So developers, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned a thing or two about making HTTP requests with Axios like a boss, like a pro. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.